This video is sponsored by Dubby Jitterless Energy Blend. Click on the link in the description and use the code PACKERMAN to save 10% on any order. What's happening ladies and germs? This is the PACKERMAN and welcome to this edition of The Fuel. where today we're going to be talking about the 2023 Shriners Children's 200 at the Glen for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And yes, there was another Shriners Children's 200 at Darlington earlier this year, but they sponsored uh, another race, this one at Watkins Glen. <sighs> yeah, um... I mean, what am I supposed to say at this point? Another race with potential that got ruined because of dumb shit. Seems to be a running theme in NASCAR this year. I mean, you had Ty Gibbs come down, start sat, sit on the pole lead most all the laps. I mean, I think he led 70 laps. There are the race stats. We had only nine lead changes the entire day. Zero pure lead changes. So that's the second straight NASCAR race. When you count the cup race at Indy last week and then Xfinity, that's the second straight NASCAR race with zero pure lead changes. So, good job on that. Five total caution flags. Of course, this was without um, the stage breaks because it was a road course. So, uh, the five cautions are for realsies. Only 1,036 green flag passes and Ty Gibbs led 70 total laps, which is most of the race. Cats, quit. But, um... Most of this race kind of boiled down to a spirited battle in the bottom half of the top 10 that seemed to be uh, the most interesting battle the entire day. And there was some uh, good battles in the top five as well, but Ty Gibbs pretty much was dominating this race from pillar to post. And then we started getting into uh, strategy as far as fuel, it's like, well, who's going to be able to make it and who's not? Well, um, several drivers were coming in for fuel, and then some were even taking four tires. And then you had the two JRM cars of Justin Allgaier and Sam Mayer. They were going to try to make it the distance on fuel. And then Ty Gibbs came in and got himself some fuel. So he could go balls to the wall. And it looked like he was going to be able to catch the two junior motorsports cars. I'm thinking, oh, this will be interesting to watch to see how this plays out. But as is always the case, it seems like every single fucking time we have one of these strategy races where we want to see where how it plays out and all that other shit. We always have a fucking back marker ruin the entire thing. Because I'm just going to say this right now. All the bullshit and stuff that happened at the end of this race, none of it would have been an issue if it weren't for Parker Retzlov absolutely losing fucking talent and burying himself in the sand trap, or in the gravel trap as it were, in turn six. And causing an absolutely unnecessary fucking caution flag. I mean, what in the actual fuck? Like, can we get some fucking drivers in this series that actually know how to drive a fucking race car? And not cause all these stupid ass fucking cautions at the end of these races and ruining potentially good finishes because of it? And then the shit show began. You know, the next to last restart, you had Ty Gibbs 
driving with his head up his ass, uh, during Sam Mayer, not once but twice in the S's, which is extremely dangerous. And then Cole Custer turns Justin Allgaier going into the carousel, and that sets off a huge pile up. So we get to the overtime period. Uh, Sam Mayer was not exactly happy with Ty Gibbs about the contact on the previous restart, which, I mean, those two have a long history. I mean, they're, they're, those two's history dates all the way back to the ARCA series when they competed in ARCA. So there's no love lost between those two. But on the last restart in overtime, because, of course, uh, Sam Mayer goes down to turn one, takes Ty Gibbs out, also takes out Austin Hill. Both were not happy with Sam Mayer after the race, which I got more to say about that here in a minute. And a lot of people were saying that Sam Mayer intentionally took Ty Gibbs out. Evidently, a lot of those people just don't know how to fucking pay attention to replays because you could clearly see on the replay the one car fishtailing as he was going down into turn one. So it was clearly wheel hopping. I mean, he wanted to try to get that. Yes, he wanted to try to get down into turn one as hard as humanly possible to try to give himself an opportunity to win the race. And he wheel hopped it. And you might say, well, he was taking it way too hard in a turn one. What's he doing? What the fuck else are you supposed to do? Hmm? It's the last two laps of the race. At that point, all bets are off. And regardless of what would have happened, Ty Gibbs had made his own bet. Because he showed that he's willing to door check and wreck anybody for a win. Including his own fucking teammate. Remember what happened last year at Martinsville? You reap what you sow. So Ty Gibbs, in my opinion, had it coming. Now while I don't agree with wrecking the leader to win a race... At the same time, Ty Gibbs had it coming. He's been doing that exact same shit for a long time. And then, <laughs> him and Austin Hill's post-race interview just makes me want to fucking reach through the computer monitor and bitch slap both of them. Because that's what they are. They're nothing but a bunch of fucking pussy-ass bitches. Because Ty Gibbs mockingly congratulated Sam Mayer on his second win. He's like, well, I got 13 and I'm racing on Sundays and he's not. You see, it's that type of fucking bullshit that comes out of his mouth is the reason why he is one of the most hated drivers in the Cup Series right now. And NASCAR, to be honest. Because, I mean, he seems to be the kind of guy that's all about Jesus and all that stuff. And that's all fine and well. But, I mean, if anything, his attitude honestly reminds me a lot of Denny Hamlin. I mean, it almost seems like he's turning into a budding fucking narcissist. And I can't stand those fucking people. I can't. Because he's not willing to admit wrong or any of that other shit. He thinks he's in the right all the time. And yeah, he's young, but he's a fucking young punk as far as I'm concerned. And as far as you having a cup ride, the only reason why you have a fucking cup ride, you dumb motherfucker, is because of nepotism. That's literally the only reason. Yeah, you may have some talent, but let's not get it fucking twisted. Okay, the only reason why you had that car right now is because your fucking senile-ass grandfather decided to drop Kyle Busch for you. And what the fuck has that turned out? How has that turned out so far this year? Ty Gibbs has one fucking top five this year, while Kyle Busch has three wins. Hmm. Funny how the world works, doesn't it? And then there's Austin Hill, who 
is nothing but a fucking whiny bitch himself. This is the same guy who is whining and complaining about being raced at Atlanta. Like, grow a fucking set, you fucking idiot. Seriously. And he says that he's lost all respect for Sam Mayer and he can kiss his ass as far as he's concerned. Well, Austin Hill, as far as I'm concerned, you can go fuck yourself. How about that? You ain't nothing but a fucking meathead anyway. I'm honestly glad that you're not coming up to the Cup Series. Because quite frankly, you're not mature enough yet to run in the fucking Cup Series, you fucking numpty. You'd just be a waste of space up there anyway. And then, uh, if that wasn't enough, I gotta, I gotta ask, what in the fuck was that cleaning job at the end of that race? Like, what the fuck were the track workers doing? Like, were they jacking off while trying to do, do this fucking uh, cleanup job at the end of this race? Because that was a fucking piss poor job cleaning up all the oil at the end of that race. Because, I mean, there were cars that were out of control, oil on the track. Like, you want to talk about fucking piss poor conditions. I mean, it looked like Sheldon Creed was finally going to get that first win. And then he went down to turn seven and he, he basically had no grip whatsoever. And Sam Mayer was able to take advantage. Inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. And we have yet another fucking Xfinity race that was on its way to having an interesting finish through strategy. And yet we have another fucking late race caution that bundles, bunches everybody back up. And then we have a whole bunch of fucking bullshit to end the race yet again. I'm fucking sick and tired of it. I really am. I mean, if these back markers aren't going to show some fucking common sense in driving, then don't be on the fucking track whatsoever. Absolute fucking poor, piss poor finish to what was actually a pretty solid race, all things considered. I mean, there was going to be some strategy involved at the end of this. I wanted to see it all play out, and yet it all went to fucking shit yet again because of a dumbass back marker. always seems to be the theme and I'm fucking sick of it so my final rating for the Shriners Children's 200 at the Glen is a 3 out of 10 probably would have been a 5 maybe even a 6 but no 3 is the best I'll give it so fuck this race I'm done talking about it I'll see ya later on for the cup review so till then take it easy I'm sick of this shit What's happening ladies and germs? Thank you for watching tonight's video. If you're interested in sponsoring the channel, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description box below. Otherwise, hit like and subscribe if you want to continue watching great content like you saw today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, this is the Packer Man, signing out.